This chaotic project turned out truly epic. I was not excited for Kill Team Gallo Fall. I really wanted it to be Space Hulk. I wanted it to be Gene Steelers versus Blood Angels Terminators. But loving Kill Team, I still decided to get the box, and I'm glad I did because the Beastmen have won me over. One of my favorite things in Kill Team is the combat mechanic. It's so different from Big 40K, and no current Kill Team really takes full advantage of it. Most Kill Teams have a couple of guys who are like the swordy guy, the daggery guy, but the Beastmen are pure close combat, and I really want to experience what that gameplay is like. Also, I've never painted fur before, and I bought some Dirty Down Rust Effect, which the internet has been raving about. But I'm a little skeptical, but I think the Beastmen will be the perfect thing to try them out on. The Beastmen don't jump out to me as a very 40k faction, but then I kind of thought about it some more. And what's more 40k than taking a classic fantasy race and just dropping it onto a spaceship? I want to paint some goat boys. Time to get to work. I base these beasts with some epic basing bits, battlefield bones, sand, and milliput to set them in a dark and foreboding chaos landscape. Well, it will be a dark and foreboding landscape. Right now, it just looks like a mess of putty resin and plastic. But that'll all change after a few layers of airbrushing. These goat boys need a prime, and my favorite primer is black. It's never let me down. Then I went in with three airbrush colors, starting with an almost green black sprayed from below, a sickly green in the middle, and a light sickly green from the top. I don't know how much of this greenish zenithal is going to show through on the final, but I want them to exist in a really evil, grim, dark world. Games Workshop painted their beastmen kind of a brown tan, which looks pretty good, but I feel like it hides a lot of the details. I want my guys to really pop. I was googling pictures of goats, and I think the perfect thing for these little guys is going to be a cute little lamb. This is my reference material. I think that grim darking that up is going to be the perfect way to make my beastmen stand out. Oh, ho, ho, look at the little bugaboo. To achieve my adorable color scheme, I need to paint the flesh a healthy looking pink. I thin down the paint with water and a little Josonja magic mix, which is a paint medium. This makes the paint semi-transparent and I put this all over their little button noses, around their eyes and all over their bulging muscles. The Zenithal before shows through this layer and it'll give me my shadows and highlights. Now these minis are incredibly detail heavy, so not wanting to pick them all out by hand, I dry brushed everything on the minis with a white paint. This gives me my edge highlights and transforms my dark, disgusting goats into bright, shining warriors. I've got the underpainting done on these goat boys, and now I think washes, just lots and lots of layers of wash, is going to be the thing that takes them to the next level. Washes flow into the cracks where they leave behind fully saturated color and tint the raised surfaces. I put the Reichlin Flesh Shade on the tops of their muscles, Karabog Crimson on the underside of each muscle, Agrax Earth Shade to blend these two colors together, and Null Noil on the hair. I worked quickly and didn't clean my brush in between colors. I flowed from one color to another and it made for some really nice skin, but I wanted to push it even further, so I broke out a blue wash. You might think this is a dumb idea, but blue over all these warm colors will darken to a purple almost black, and I use this to create some shadows without losing any vibrancy. It just darkens the recesses even further. Oh, I don't use washes nearly enough. They really did their job. And using all of those different colors gave me such a lovely complexion to their skin. Now I get to do my favorite thing in all of painting, highlighting. It has taken me years to learn how to highlight properly, and I'm still a ways off of getting smooth highlights. I'm an impatient painter. Highlighting is creating the brightest spots of color in the miniature, so I went back to my skin mix and mixed in some white paint and put dots of this on the muscles. I didn't put this color over much of the miniatures, just a few dabs on the top of some muscles to make them stand out. The washes naturally pool lower on the miniatures, leaving the skin bright on top of the shoulders, arms, and chest, so this is where I applied my highlights and just a dot of white in the middle of each of these tan highlights for maximum contrast. If my shadows are almost black and my highlights are almost white, I know I have some nice looking miniatures. These goats have some great skin, just an overall great look, and if you guys want to upgrade your look, today's sponsor is just for you. Imagine you're walking into the local game store ready to rock with your miniatures in a Jokoshi storage case. Your miniatures are held rock solid, but your hands are fumbling with the door. Well, with the Jokoshi backpack, those days of fumbling are over. The Jokoshi Miniature Transport Case already moves your models in style, and now it's time for you to move in style. With the Jokoshi Miniature Storage Case Backpack, your hands are free, and you're unencumbered while you strut your models to and from the friendly local game store. As the cool kids say, it's a vibe. The case is covered in large pockets that can hold your rule books, dice, and even has room left over for all your essentials, like Mountain Dew and Doritos. If you want a game like a winner, you have to fuel like a winner. The large service area gives you another great opportunity to display all your nerd swag. 
It's a huge bag for a huge case, but that just means you have a huge army. Sometimes bigger is better. If you want to try the Chikoshi bag for yourself, you can follow the link in the description below. These Beastman models are excellent, however they're not going to be available to purchase separately from the Gallo Fall box until after the next Kill Team box has already come out, if Games Workshop follows the trends that they set up. I would say if you're looking for a really good proxy for these guys, the Zangors from the Thousand Suns would be just about perfect. They're the right size and shape, and they are also half man, although they're half bird instead of half goat. And speaking of goats, it's time for the fur. I decided to paint the fur in the hardest way possible. I could have just dry brushed it. These Games Workshop minis have some pretty good sculpted texture. But what will make the fur look extra real is making hundreds of little lines. I took a very sharp paintbrush and a light gray paint and touched it to the model and then dragged it away. Doing this over and over and over and over and over, it was a lot of work. But it made the hair look a lot more real. After I did this once with gray, I did it again with white paint. Luckily, these guys are mostly naked. I don't think I could do this on something like a squad of horses, or heaven forbid, an entire Skaven army. Ah, oh, these goat guys. With the skin and fur done, they're like 80% complete, and I do think they look a fair bit like my reference material, which, once again, is this. <laughs> it's so cute! And now I want to move on to the metal, and to do this, I actually have it in my pocket. Some Dirty Down Rust Effect. I have never used this up before, and actually the reason it was in my pocket is because it seems to be pretty sensitive to temperature. It's usually pretty cold in my studio, and so that mixing ball was just stuck to the bottom in a layer of gunk, but warming it up a little bit in my pocket, it's working. So let's see what happens. Ooh, and of course I can't test a new product without giving it the sniff test, so, ooh, ooh. Do you know what that smells like? That's, does anybody remember balloonies? <laughs> like that, that, those tubes of toxic sludge you give to little kids, it's like a, an off-brand rubber cement and you like blow bubbles out of it and they're crazy colors. It smells, it smells exactly like that. Holy cow, that's a memory from way back in the deep dark recesses of my brain. Now I'm really curious to see what happens. This stuff is really watery. I pulled some of it out of the bottle with a pipette because I was nervous of it all pouring out if I just tipped it onto my palette. It sucks up onto the bristles like a wash and I just threw it over all the metal. It doesn't look like much wet, just a nice orangey color and I tried it on the Axe Guy thinned way down with water to see if that changes anything. It dried fairly quick, some parts were already starting to rust up before I was done brushing it on and after about five minutes it had transformed. The Dirty Down looks very good, it's really convincing. But I'm not sure if convincing is really what you want in miniature painting, you're always kind of exaggerating for effect. Right now, their bodies are very silly and theatrical, and the rust is very accurate, and it looks a little bit off. Also, when you thin it down, you lose a little bit of the vibrancy of the orange, but it doesn't seem to diminish the effect at all. It still did the rustiness. I think what I'm going to try to do is, it's water soluble, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of water and see if maybe I can remove a little bit of the paint, and then I think a dry brushing will clean it up nicely. I ran a wet paintbrush over top and it reactivated instantly. As I introduced water onto the paint, I wiped away the excess on a paper towel. And the tricky part is you can't really tell what the rust looks like while wet. You have to just try and then let it dry again before you know if you've nailed it. The paint is very workable though, a bit like oil paint. I had no problem rubbing the paint away and once it dried I could see much more of the undercoating through the rust. It was looking much more subtle. Now to highlight, I put some bright silver paint onto my dry palette and began dry brushing, rubbing this over the rust effect, and it worked perfectly. I was nervous that this would reactivate the paint and mix, but the rust stayed down and the silver stuck to the edges, giving me nice highlights. Now I am loving how this metal looks, but I still want to go darker in some places. I put black wash over these areas, and the wash paint sticks to the rust effect. It kills the orange pretty much instantly, but it did leave me with some nice shadows. Alright, this Dirty Down stuff is pretty amazing. It's very, very workable once it's on there, and you can get some pretty amazing effects out of it. It looks really good. Almost as good as the terrain over on our Patreon. Over there we have a new train pack every month. This month we have the Gothic Modular Trenches a customizable network of walkways with bits to make them suitable for Imperial or Chaos factions. You can pick up the whole set through the EOB terrain tier on our Patreon hosted through Comics Games and Things, or you can subscribe to our tribes over on My Mini Factory. The Goatmen are uniquely disgusting, even in the world of Warhammer 40k where everything is awful and covered in blood. In the lore, it describes the pinnacle of their civilization, the Her Totems, these giant effigies to Chaos, are covered in bones and skulls and chains and blood, and feces. Yes, poop. They pray to poop rocks. I have so many questions. Are they little goat pellet poops? Is it human poop? 
How many times am I allowed to say poop before the video gets demonetized? I have so many questions and no answers, and it just makes me fall in love with the Beastmen. And there's just a few more disgusting things I wanna to do to these guys before I wrap them up. I glazed an ultra watery blue over the hair. This might seem nuts, but I'm introducing a little bit of coldness into the fur, and that'll make it stand out strongly against the warm muscles and armor. It's like playing a trick on your eyes. It won't look blue, just very different from everything else on the models. Another sickly thing I decided to do was to make the eyes bleeding. I don't know why this would be happening to them. Maybe it's chaos, maybe it's a dry climate, maybe it's their contact lenses, but it sure is creepy. And for their eyes, I base coated them with a dot of white paint and then a coat of fluorescent yellow paint. The blood outlines the eye sockets nicely and the fluorescent paint reflects more light than the surrounding white fur, making their eyes stand out. And the leader has a stolen plasma gun, which I decided to paint with a Dawn of War hot pink. I used the airbrush and magenta ink to overspray and do a little bit of object source lighting and then glaze some white paint into the plasma coils. Thin down, this runs into the cracks and leaves behind nice white lines, which I exaggerated by painting more magenta onto the tops of the coils. Imagine Beauty and the Beast with one of these guys. Very different love story. I'm agonizing over what color to paint the bases. Originally I was thinking blue, but now it doesn't seem right. I think I wanna go with something a little more disgusting. Maybe a pea brown and a poop green. I took the grossest speed paint colors and put these on, making each base 50-50, with a blend in the middle. Whatever chaos planet these goats are walking on, it's very disgusting. Now the bases are nice and tinted, I want the ground much darker, but the bones and rocks will still be bright, so I decided a pigment powder would be just the thing. I used a brush to sprinkle this on, and it filled up the ground, and I could wipe it away from the bones and rocky outcroppings. Now the powder is sitting on the bases just right. I have the pigments exactly how I want them, and I want to put on this pigment binder through the airbrush, but if I airbrushed right now, it would just blow away. What I'm gonna do is I have this squirt bottle full of water with a mist function. That should be just enough to saturate the pigments without blowing them away, and then I can come in with the airbrush. I love getting to do weird stuff to minis, and spritzing them like succulents definitely qualifies as an unconventional painting method. I don't know why I don't think things through properly. Now the paper on my desk is all wet and wrinkly, but the miniatures look great. I turned the PSI on my airbrush as low as it could possibly go and sprayed on the pigment binder, which I'm pretty sure is just Elmer's glue and water. I did this while the bases were still a little damp and it worked like a charm. Now for some added grossness, a little blood spatter. I took my most beat up brush and some blood for the blood god technical paint and stippled this onto the bases. And of course, for these dark and disgusting minis, there couldn't be anything else but a black base rim. The most aggressive kill team ever is ready for the tabletop. The Beastmen are another tragic example of how the Imperium brings its own destruction onto itself. The Beastmen are a form of stable mutation in humans. No one knows why it happens, but every now and then a baby is born with hooves and a tail. Now, not all mutants are disavowed by the Imperium outright. Sometimes they're even welcomed, albeit grudgingly into the Imperial society, like the Ogrins and Rattlings, but the Beastmen have the misfortune of looking particularly vicious. So they're not only shunned by mankind, but exterminated. On those rare occasions where they are allowed to serve, they're used as expendable labor or soldiers thrown into suicidal fighting conditions. They are mistreated because of the fear that chaotic powers is what caused their mutations. This hostility is what's driven the Beastmen into the arms of Chaos and shows the hubris of mankind in the 41st millennium. The Imperium's actions to prevent the spread of Chaos has actually caused the ruinous powers to gain a powerful ally. I'm very proud of how these Beastie Boys turned out. I pretty much nailed my reference material. They are my 12th kill team and my current favorite. I might just have to make a herdstone terrain piece for them, complete with bones, blood, and of course, poop.